Hey, it's Steve. In this video, I'm going to show you how I built this great little 2x3 foot end scale layout. Let's watch. Okay, so this project started back in the spring of 2020 as part of a simultaneous build of four different layout projects. The base of the layout was built from a 2x3 pine plank I picked up from Home Depot that was framed up with 1x4 poplar boards. I also attached a couple of 1x4 boards to the bottom of the layout to help prevent the base from warping and to provide a recessed area for wires. Next, I cut a sheet of 2 inch thick insulation foam board to fit the opening created on the layout base. I glued that in place with regular wood glue and then cut to size another 2 inch thick sheet of foam board for the next layer. I cut up additional pieces and stacked them up to create the rough scenery profile using the loop of track on the layout as a guide for where to cut and place the pieces of foam. Once the pieces were cut to size, I glued and nailed them to the base of the layout. But for the larger mountain on the left, I glued and nailed most of the, of the pieces together, but not to the base of the layout itself, so I would still have access to the tunnel area until that area was completed. Now, you might be noticing that this does not really look like the finished layout. Well, I'll, I will get to that later on, but basically I decided to change things up halfway through the construction, uh, kind of dramatically changing the overall appearance of the layout. Anyway, with the foam in place and roughly carved a shape, I mixed up a large batch of sculpta mold to which I added some brown paint. I then added this to the bottom portion of the layout, leaving the mountain part unfinished since I wanted to complete the tunnel area first. You can see here how things looked at that point. Before laying the track, I scraped clean the foam areas where the track would be placed. Once I figured out the track placement, I connected a pair of Kato Unitrack rail joiners that have power leads attached to one end of the loop. I wanted the wires to come out of the side of the base, so I needed to make a pathway for the wires. I could have just used a drill, but just so I would have a chance to play with fire, I heated a threaded rod with my blowtorch and used that to melt a nice clean hole through the foam. Then I did use my drill to make a hole through the side of the base, since it is kind of hard to melt your way through a piece of wood. I used the threaded rod to melt a bit more foam to make sure the hole is connected, and then I threaded the wire through the hole. With that done, I used hot glue to permanently attach the track to the layout base. Next, I solder the plug socket to the wires coming from the track, putting some heat shrink tubing over the solder joints. I then soldered the connector from the Unitrack joiners to the cable that had the plug that fits in the socket I used. I then plugged the wire into my Roku Han battery powered controller and to the layout and did a quick test run to make sure that everything worked okay. I then painted the bottom portion of the layout brown and soldered most of the rail joints. With that done, I painted the rails with a testers rail brown paint pen. Then I covered the tunnel area with dirt and ballasted that section of track, soaking everything well with diluted matte medium. With that done, I was able to glue and nail the top section of the mountain to that portion of the layout. When trying to glue on one of the tunnel portals, I promptly broke it, but was still able to get it glued in place with a liberal helping of wood glue. For the other portal, I just cut a piece of foam to shape and glued that in place since I didn't have another of the precast plaster portals. 
It was time to finish the base scenery at this point, so I made another large batch of sculptor mold and covered the remaining foam base areas and also reworked part of the river area. I did lose the next section of the video where I put the first layer of ground foam and dirt on, but basically I covered the entire layout with dirt and then a layer of ground foam, some static grass in some areas as well, and filled in the riverbed area with some gravel and coarse dirt. The layout sat this way for a couple of months since I didn't really like how it looked, plus I was still waiting for you to smash that like button for the YouTube algorithm. After a while, inspiration hit and I decided to add more terrain as well as a mine scene to the layout. So I took out the smaller bridge and another section of track using a soldering iron to melt the solder so I could remove those track sections. I then put in, put in a Kato number six right hand turnout and hacked away at the smaller mountain on the right hand side of the layout to make room for more track. Next, I cut up more insulation foam board and stacked that in the middle of the layout, hot gluing it in place once I had the general arrangement like I wanted. I then mixed up a big batch of sculptor mold and worked that over the new foam base. I should have probably carved the foam so it wouldn't have to use as much sculptor mold, but I was too lazy to do that and so I had to mix up two more batches just to get everything covered, but when I did, I think it turned out pretty well. It took about a week for the sculptor mold to fully dry since it was so thick and the humidity levels were fairly high. Once it did dry though, I covered everything with a brown wash and then the next day came back with a black wash. You could do a couple of washes of other colors as well, such as one that's more yellow and one more of a burnt umber, but just doing the brown wash and the black wash usually produces uh, you know, nice looking rocks with enough shading variation to look pretty realistic. To make things pop more though, I always do some dry brushing with gray paint. I don't like using white paint for highlights on the rock since it looks a little too stark, but a light or medium colored gray paint usually does a trick pretty well. With the painting done, I sifted dirt over the entire layout, then sprayed everything down with isopropyl alcohol and then diluted matte medium. Once that dried, I came through and sprayed on the glue mix where I wanted the grass and then added a layer of static grass. I did though mix a few shades of static grass in the hopper before applying it to the layout so the grass wasn't just a uniform shade of green. So next up I needed trees, and quite a few of those actually. I picked up this box of 100 hikey or hakey trees for about $30. They look pretty fake out of the box, so I wanted to admit to paint them and flock them to make them look more realistic. I tried out different techniques, but what eventually seemed to work the best was to paint them all a flat black, then spray them down with a deeper green color, uh, from the top at least, and then I sprinkled on flocking to the wet paint and then let the paint dry. I then came back and sprayed them down again with more glue and then more flocking and did that a few more times. For the second batch though, so I didn't end up, you know, using half of my flocking just on the foam board itself, I just dunked each of the trees after they were painted and the paint dried into a bowl of matte medium and then rolled them in the flocking material so I wouldn't waste as much flocking. And then I did that a couple times to kind of get everything coated pretty well. You can see what the trees looked like here having had the flocking applied and I think it does look definitely a lot better than they looked out of the box. To install the trees, I just poked holes into the scenery with a screwdriver and then glued the trees into the holes with a dab of wood glue. At this point, I wanted to get the rest of the track ballasted, so I spread out the ballast on the remainder of the track using a soft brush to shape it, and then sprayed the track down with alcohol and then the glue mix. I decided at this point to add a train station to the layout as well, and so I wanted to have a dirt access road to the station. I needed to build a crossing first, so cleared away some of the ballast I had just put down, and then glued down the steel crossing plates from a Woodland Scenics kit using CA. 
The pieces that attach to the outside of the rails have part of the plastic cut away to fit over the track spike, so make sure if you use this kit to have that section facing the rails. Instead of building up the road using plaster like I normally do, I just made the entire thing out of dirt. So I dumped enough dirt to make a smooth road up and over the crossing and using some sheet styrene to kind of pack it down and smooth it. When that was done, I then soaked everything with alcohol and then matte medium multiple times. Because the dirt layer was pretty thick, it did take several uh, applications of glue to get everything pretty well secured. I forgot though that I do need to have a hole for the wires from the station to go through since it is a lighted station. So I drilled that out, trying not to make too much of a mess on my new road surface. I glued the station in place and then added more ballast to allow for passengers to walk from the platform to the passenger car steps. I then added more dirt and glue around the station and continued making the road smoother. With that done, it was time to move on to building the mine for the layout. I decided to use the Walther's Glacier Gravel Company kit. I've used this kit in the past and like it. In fact, on my first 15 by 20 inch micro layout, uh, the, the mine scene in that layout was actually a kit bash of this same kit. I wasn't going to be able to build the kit exactly as it showed uh, in the directions, but it ended up being actually pretty close and closer than I thought it was going to be. Anyway, I cut out most of the main kit pieces, writing the part numbers of each piece in pencil on the piece itself. Then I traced out each piece onto some chipboard, labeling those pieces as well. This way, I could cut out the chipboard pieces and kind of build the kit out of the chipboard to figure out exactly how I wanted to have everything arranged without worrying about damaging the actual kit pieces. I assembled most of the bottom sections of the chipboard version of the kit, then placed it on a layout. Using my tallest piece of rolling stock, I figured out how much of the wall section would need to be cut out to allow for trains to pass through the right side of the structure. I also needed another wall inside the structure, so I cut that out from another uh, one of the kit pieces I was not going to have to use to fit on the inside and serve as a wall alongside the main opening. Now with all the chipboard pieces cut in the way I needed them, I could use those as templates for the actual styrene kit pieces. Once I had cut all the kit pieces to size and sanded the edges smooth, I could assemble the kit. The kit assembly goes pretty quick for the main mine structure and I used some one, two, three blocks to help keep things square. Once I had the base section done, I took it back to the layout to make sure everything was still going to fit okay, and then once I was sure of that, I proceeded to build up the rest of the structure as the kit direction showed. To paint the structure, I first painted everything in a flat black, which is now my preferred way of kind of priming uh, plastic structure kits. Then I painted everything in a stone beige color. I decided at that point though that I wanted the metal sections of the structure to have a heavily rusted look, and so I then painted the structure with a brick red color. I then needed to go back and paint the concrete sections once again, so I used some cardboard to cover the sheet metal portions and then spray painted the concrete areas, uh, the original beige color that I had done previously. With that all done, it was time to finish assembling the structure pieces. The kit includes dual loading bins that extend out from the structure, but I only actually had room for one bin, uh, and so I cut those pieces of the kit down in half, and the conveyor belt sections are trickier to assemble, and I had to kind of cut those to fit the uh, space that I had on the right side of the layout as well. The conveyor belt sections don't really look quite right when you build them exactly as the kit shows, so I built them a little bit differently um, to kind of look a little bit better, I thought. The main issue there is that if you build the conveyors directly as the kit shows, there's no actual conveyor in the in the uh, conveyor belt part, part. 
And so I basically use the roof section of the conveyor as the bottom and then use another section of roof as the top. So I basically use two roof pieces, one on the bottom, one on the top, uh, instead of the regular normal bottom piece that the kit shows. I painted all those a red color as well, then dry brushed everything with gray and added a black wash to the structure. At this point, it was time to wire up all of the lights. I put this off since I don't really like wiring as much as other portions of layout construction, but it needed to get done. I picked up some Woodland Scenics Just Plug street lights as well as a Just Plug lighted pickup truck. I drilled holes for the wires for those items, but there is not really any chance that you're going to be able to thread that very thin magnet wire they use in those kits through four inches of styrofoam without getting it snagged somewhere in there. So I taped the wires to a piece of metal tubing that I had and then use that to fish the wires through the holes. The lamp on the Woodland Scenic train depot though is not actually lighted, it's just there for decoration. So I just broke off that lamp, drilled a hole through the layout in that place, and then put in one of the street lights that I had in that location as well. I then fished through the wires from the two lights I glued inside the mine structure as well. And then at that point I had all the wires sticking out the bottom of the layout to be connected together. I mixed up some ballast and matte medium to make a paste that I could use to kind of spread around the base of the mine structure to help hide any of the gaps and to help secure it in place. I did have to shim up one side of the structure to keep it level and use some chipboard to do that, gluing everything in place. And since I was going to use that ballast paste, it was all going to be hidden anyway. I glued the structure down with some wood glue, weighted it down, and then applied that ballast paste around the edges of the structure. I added a loading bin and conveyor belts, and then I also mixed up some dirt and matte medium to help secure the sides of the conveyor belt along the edge of the layout. I then used some CA to glue down the pickup truck and to glue in the street lights around the station. I needed to wire up the lights to the just plug controller as well as to the battery holder. I played around with different ideas and then decided to glue the battery holder to the back of a small black project box. This would then fit inside a larger project box and to make the opening in the lid to that box I heated up a knife with my blowtorch and then cut through the plastic to make the opening I needed. A hot knife will cut through styrene super easily and it makes, a, it makes it a lot faster to cut any type of opening where you don't need a really, really precise cut. I next cut openings in the layout for the battery box as well as to partially recess the light controller box. The wires from the lights weren't long enough by themselves to reach the controller box, so I had to solder on some extensions to each of the wires. I then put the wires through a hole I drilled from the side of the layout through the base and hooked them up to the controller board. I had to also solder a wire from the controller box to the toggle switch and then from the toggle switch to the battery holder, and then from the battery holder back to the controller box, so I could turn the lights on and off with that switch. Next, I hot glued the controller box and the battery box to the back of the layout. A quick test showed everything was working properly, and I didn't show this, but I glued some magnets onto the toggle switch box and to the base of the layout so it will stick in place, but can still be easily pulled out to change the batteries. Next, I glued the wires to the base of the layout using some hot glue, and then added wood strips to help protect that wiring area and then glued on some pieces of chipboard over the wires to help prevent them from being snagged and pulled out uh, if the layout is kind of slid around on something that might have something that might grab those wires. And here's a quick look at the lights. The handful of lights really do add a lot to the layout even if they are kind of a pain to wire up. The last scenery item to be completed was the river and waterfall. I once again used Envirotex light two-part epoxy along with cotton balls for the waterfalls I've done in some previous layouts. I mixed up a cup of epoxy, stirred it up well, and then stretched out some cotton ball pieces and soaked those in the epoxy. I then draped the soaked cotton balls on the layout where I wanted the waterfall to be. 
I worked on multiple pieces of cotton to build up the waterfall and the rapids area above the waterfall until it looked pretty much the way I wanted it to. Once I had the waterfall mostly done, I poured most of the remainder of the epoxy into the river bottom area, and then I poured the rest along the upper river area as well, letting it run down where it wanted to. Added a little bit more cotton and got that arranged as well until I thought everything looked good. The epoxy will develop bubbles as it dries, and so you do need to pop those bubbles before the epoxy hardens or they will stay there forever. I like to wave a lighter over the epoxy to quickly pop those bubbles, but you can also just breathe on it through a straw to remove the bubbles and that will work as well. I came back and did two more layers of the epoxy on the bottom river area to kind of fill that in over the next couple of days. I didn't want to do all that in one pour since I wasn't sure how long that would take to dry at that point, and there's more risk of the epoxy cracking the thicker the layer is that you pour in. While the water feature was curing, I painted the wood trim on the layout of flat black, then came back and touched up the scenery along the edge of the trim. When the first coat of paint was dry, I lightly sanded the trim and then added a second coat of black paint. To finish off the trim areas, I mixed up some matte medium and gloss medium, about two thirds matte medium to one third gloss medium to help create a satin finish. I applied two coats of that mix to the trim to help enhance the look and to add a layer of protection to the trim. Once the water feature was cured, I came back and touched up the scenery along the edge of the layout. The epoxy likes to creep up into the surrounding scenery, and that can sometimes look good, like wet dirt along the river for example, but in other cases it doesn't look quite right. It is easy enough to fix though by adding a little glue and additional dirt or ground foam. I also added some more turf to other areas of the layout and then glued on a few more trees as well. The last thing to do was to add a layer of gloss medium on top of the epoxy. I managed to scratch up the epoxy in places when I was touching up the scenery and then trying to clean up the dirt and foam that had gotten onto the water. But that was easy enough to fix with just a layer of gloss medium. Anytime you have a water feature that is looking kind of dull or gets scratched, you can just add another layer of gloss medium on there and that restores that really shiny luster to the water feature very easily. So there it is, a two by three foot end scale layout featuring steep mountain terrain, a waterfall and a river, a mine scene and a bridge, a small train station, and plenty of trees. I really like how this layout turned out, and a key takeaway here is that if you get halfway done building the layout and don't like how it looks, just go ahead and change it. This layout turned out much better than it would have looked had I continued building it as I originally planned. Usually, I don't know how a scene should look until I start building it, and this was a case here where I had to keep working at it until it turned into both a realistic and an interesting scene to look at. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed watching this video and be sure to subscribe if you haven't since I do have other layout projects in the works I'll be showing videos on in the coming months. Also, if you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up to help with the YouTube algorithm since it does help out a lot. But that's all for now and thanks for watching. Bye.